We are citizens of this country and we are human beings and we must be respected. The people have to understand that we are here to serve them, so they have to be law abiding. We want the security that understands the people they are serving. We've all seen during the past 22 years how the security apparatus are cutting across, especially in the military, has been misused. The security in general are not responding positively to the needs of the average Gambians. Therefore, with this present dispensation, we found democracy, where we have freedom of speech and all those things. There is need to revisit the security so that it is in line with democracy and the rule of law. Because the security apparatus are very important in the maintenance of peace in this country. So if they are not reformed, we will still be in the dark days. I call it dark days because we all knew what has happened in the country here. And uh, the revelations are very enormous in the TRRC. So the Never Again campaign is in line with the security sector review. When the security are reformed, they should be uh, in the better position to serve the African Gambian. And vis-a-vis, -vis, the African Gambian should be in a better position to have confidence in the security. The security sector reform is progressing now. I think uh, we have picked up uh, traction. Initially, there was this perception that is slow. Essentially, security sector reform is out to be able to ensure that we reform or transform our security sector to ensure they are effective, they are efficient, they are controlled by civilian authority, they respect human rights and adhere to rule of law. The security lacks a lot, the capacity-wise, in terms of the personnel's capacity, in terms of logistics. If you go look around, you see some of the police stations are not proper. You go to the military barracks, you look at where the soldiers are staying. So the security sector reforms in the finance indicated those gaps. And then we feel that those also needed to be addressed. The reform process is designed in such a way that it is integrated and holistic but it is implemented through sectoral projects and action plans, regarded as implementation mechanisms specific to each area of intervention. So you have the defense reform, you have the police reform, you have customs reform, you have SIS reform. In the course of these, a lot of trainings have been delivered so far to ensure that the reforms are in line with international best practices. Security sector reform is basically to have a security sector that is fit for purpose. And that is the security sector that is there for the interest of the country and to serve its people. One must know that SSR usually is very slow and it can take up to 20 years. And therefore, in as much as uh, Gambians are yearning for SSRs, we should also be at the same time very patient uh, with the process as many things are happening. DCAF, uh, through the support of uh, the European Union, have been implementing various uh, activities in the country for the last 18 months. DCAF in Banjul have been giving advisory service um, to the NSA and the Office of the National Security. We are supporting the National Assembly in you know, order to build their capacity. We are supporting the media. We are supporting the CSOs. The 1997 constitution of the Gambia, you know, uh, uh, giving prov provisions for the National Assembly to institute uh, within its body uh, standing and select committees, uh, but uh, specifically a standing committee you know, on defense and uh, security has the mandate you know, to uh, conduct oversight function on all security and defense related you know, apparatus, uh, apparatuses in the country.
the security sector reform process in the Gambia you know, is one of those processes that we, as a government, have identified to be one of the challenges that we need to do, you know, to be able to bring our security out posture to a sustainable level. Over the past 22 years, the Gambia security services were somehow politicized. They engaged in a lot of human rights violations to the extent that people, you know, the citizens don't have confidence in the security anymore. Women have not been playing a very key role as far as the security sector is concerned. There are limited number at the upper level, but again, that is not, not, not what we are advocating for. Because, for instance, when it comes to peace mission, you have very limited number of uh, women participation. And we all know in times of war, you know, there are men needs and women need. I think there is a need that women are considered to also occupy very, you know, critical positions within the security. And we have been advocating for that. Uh, as far as this uh, SSR is concerned, it will be factored in adequately. Recommendations from these various assessments included, included the development of a national security policy and strategy to implement the national SSR policy and the recommendations of the SSR assessment report with a view to reform the security sector. It is therefore of utmost importance to adequately address gender concerns in the security sector as we undertake the reform process. As in most sectors, women are grossly under, underrepresented in the security forces, especially in the top decision-making positions. This begins with the recruitment, training, and promotions. However, the few female officers who have made it to the top have excelled by all standards. This is an indication that performance at work is not based on sex or gender, but rather on the education, training, experience, commitment, and dedication of the individual. I must applaud the CAF and um, the EU for helping in the SSR process, really. But um, I think that it is going really well. DCAF have been able to engage the SSIs, that is the security sector institutions. They have also been able to um, engage the CSOs as well as the government. And I think that these are arms in the country that can help um, in improving the speed at which the SSR process is going. Civil societies are just oversight bodies. They are closer to the people. So I see them as uh, mediators between the government and the people. So with the um, CSOs in the SSR process, it is really important, you know, but the government needs to give them um, the space also as well. And the SSIs also need to cooperate with them in this process. So they could uh, be the link between the people and the government and the um, security institutions as well. Security la karo de fo ye ma ko yin sanyi muanin folo dalita minna ke bonda ko no chaka no tede dalita la mo dal fem an sika ni dalita re bi kalif ta bula la no na nyo na nyo jibe na nyo kanganya al fal min be nyato ye ye press police on in soldier ro ya je ko in months, I could not cut on Sita, Falindro, a careful mobile along Falindro Ketel. For Mobe, I don't Falindro Ketel, but Falindro be the Mentella Geroto Falindri monkey, I tell you, Catan San. For security, I am Marco, Marco Yajako, the Banco Cantocan, Imanter Mokling Cantoca. Security reform, Solan Kovaheni. Nous bokko ko ñu ñep fekk ko jaaduna lool nak ñu laal du police du soldat du para du xawma lan boru uniform yu bari ñun xamuñu won yi yire way deug deug nak legi uniform yu bari na dañ dem ba suñu security sector ci nekatu doñ professions dede dafa nekko outu kaay liggey what can we do pour set nak la ñu fuse ay departments or institutions yo xamne Dina more effective than it is today. Legally, you are not your body. Soldier, no, police, no, para, no, immigration, no, a clo monadon. Johal chair civilian be. You need not worry, Lena, hep, did it. Before I worry, Lena, Japa, you daddy, 
You know, there are there the police be a police la need la. Security sector reform, it's beyond just the security. It's about the people they are serving. And if you are there as a servant, the one you are serving does not have a trust in you, how will you serve that individual? The security really need to look at themselves critically, analyze themselves, their behaviors and their mindset. Little or nothing has changed. I think before we talk about security sector reform, we really need to talk to Gambians about their mindset and what do they believe in. Because we still, we see that those in the previous regime are the same people serving us. You know, those who have committed atrocities against their own people are the same people here preaching about security sector reform, are the same people talking about peace, are the same... I mean, how do you expect me to believe in what you're saying? How do you expect me to take you seriously? Human rights violations, police br brutality has been experienced even with this new dispensation, especially on young people. So I believe the security sector reform should try and engage the young people. There should be a national dialogue. The young people are more vulnerable. Even this, in the security, those perpetrators, those adversely mentioned, they, they are, most of them were young. So I believe there must be a dialogue between the young people and the security apparatus to ensure a smooth um, security sector reform. In every uh, situation, you know, you have your challenges and, um, you know, th those things, especially for a country that has uh, undergone, you know, 22 years of uh, dictatorial regime, obviously you can expect, you know, some, some challenges. But uh, when it comes to the reform, you know, in, in, in general, in the past a few months, we have uh, made some significant progress. For the first time in our history, we were able to launch the national security policy. In addition to the national security policy, you know, the national security strategy is also being prepared. And of course, the security sector reform strategy, strategic document is also in the making, almost uh, in, in completion. But um, beside that high level, I, I want to also um, state that um, the, the services, respective services, have been doing undertaking some reform activities. For almost 22 years, the Minister of Defense did not have a, a, a minister. Our activities, or our minister used to be the, the head of state, but because of this process, uh, now a new minister has been appointed. There is need uh, to refocus and redirect our activities towards our constitutional mandates, in particular the Gambia Navy. We are supposed to focus on uh, the specific rules that are assigned to us uh, by the Constitution. Uh, the security sector reform is trying to redirect uh, that focus. And the Navy or, uh, is a specialized uh, institution. And then we need uh, better training. We need more training at all levels, at the strategic level, at the operational level and at the tactical level. I think uh, reform goes uh, beyond formulation of policies, laws and regulations. And when you say uh, reform, it need, need resources. Like in the Navy, we have the personnel but we don't have the platforms. We need offshore patrol boats to be able to take care of our blue economy. That's the whole world is earning now when it comes to trade, fishery and the oil industry and inflatable boats to be able to take care of our inland water against any criminal activities within our maritime domain. We need to come together in partnership and help the Navy to achieve its goal. This is the river that we have. It's almost uh, 64 nautical miles, which is 11,000 miles in land waters that we have. So we need to protect that for our future generation to come. We have changed the security orientation you know, of, of, of this country. We have tried to move away from regime security to you know, human security. And that has um, given us the opportunity to be able to 
you know, um, external coverage to places where they have hardly see, you know, any, anybody in uniform. And, and this, uh, this is part of our, our, our country, it's part of our territory, and these are our people. And they would want to see, you know, some security being provided, you know, for them. But besides um, the presence also, we, we have also tried to change the quality of security that we provide, you know, for the people. In a situation where we find ourselves, uh, there is that need for the security forces to be restructured, to be reformed in a way that it will match to international standards. The process is going on. It's not very, very fast, but then one will say it's, it's on progress because so many things have happened during this time of this uh, security sector reform. Uh, we have restructured the police force in many areas. For the first time, we were able to come up with a five years development strategy plan. We were also able to come up with a review of the Police Act. We were also able to come up with a promotion policy, the recruitment policy that was also made during this course of this security sector reform. Because I had seen in the past that promotions was not guided by policies. I mean, uh, recruitment was not also guided, guided by policies. And uh, uh, the, the Police Act had been a very colonial document. It had been uh, not reviewed for, for a very long time. And it was during this interval that we were able to come up with all these initiatives. And I would say that uh, the security sector reform uh, program initiative had brought in a lot of changes as far as the Gambia Police Force is concerned. The SSR process is in full progress. And since its initiative uh, with the new government, it has helped to transform the various services profoundly. Uh, it has not just helped to professionalize the officers who are engaged in, in the service of security, but it has also to a great extent changed the core function of the security services. Take the police for instance. Uh, we are more committed towards serving people. We are against everything that goes against human rights. And, and, and to that effect, we are training officers to make sure their human rights capacity is more enhanced, their, their, their knowledge and skills of policing is more enhanced and more people-centered. So the SSR process is doing just that towards transforming the officers that are serving towards upholding these principles. So we are fully, uh, fully engaged and participating and involved in the, in the, in the ongoing SSR, SSR process. This is a, is a new start for the country. For the first time, we are also having the Office of National Security. For the first time, we are having the Office of National Security Advisor. In dealing with the legacy of the past, we had to reform as a service. We knew part of the fear was because of the activities that we are carried out, which has affected the confidence and the relations between the public and the, and the service. And there was this barrier in communication between the service and the people. But today, I mean, every Gambian can, I think, if not every, but many, and probably most Gambians can also attest to the fact that this service is accessible. Of course, we are a secret service. There are things that will, of course, be, be, be done out of the public view in the interest of the public. Those businesses must be carried out. Today, the intelligence service, the SIS, is the chair of the West Africa Intelligence Service. That's a big, big thing for us, for this country. We hosted the regional intelligence conference in this country that we had all the member states of ECOWAS come to attend with other international friends and partners from all around the globe who came. And I think, again, that was a stamp of trust on, 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 on the reforms, achievements of the service, but also of the country as well. What kind of security challenges do we have as a nation? And are the current forces, as they are constituted, is that the best way to address those security challenges? Um, as far as the TRRC and the SSR process, of course, you see the, the number of witnesses that have been coming here, um, or people that have been adversely mentioned, primarily come from um, the security sector. So some of the recommendations that we will make or that we are to make towards uh, the security sector reform uh, of 
paramount, I mean, are very important to that process. The TRRC is meant to be a healing process. It's meant to bring the nation together. It's, it's meant to bring victims and people that have been, you know, adversely mentioned to be able to, to, to come together as, as one Gambian, to be able to build a better Gambia and to leave a better Gambia for, for, for posterity. The TRRC should be supported because uh, not all of us, you know, would have believed that this thing had happened in this country. It is only with the TRRC that people will get to know what happened. And again, looking at it, the victims also need closure. So without uh, the truth being told, without justice, there can be no reconciliation. So I want to urge all and sundry to support the, the, the TRC as, as, as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, there is a need for healing. And as I said, without truth being known, we, 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 will, we can never heal. TRC bange produce results. Because Teji, Kulawa Horne, Domi Gambia, New Boca School, Boka Dara, Boka Lil, Boka Hamna Jamano, Boka Coin, Boka Tapat, Gam Heisuba, Boka Ligue, Naima Jano, Nidima Fetel, Nima Sanity Bitten. Kula Hone Domi Gambia no Grave Boko Nangude. Or the past twenty two years, Bin Nekon, Am Namba Hwao, Wae, Lichibon Barinade, Sakanalol, the Opelichabach. Fafak Parka Fui Fare Bakan Regbona. Tahna Benak Lolo in the disparity be am digante police be soldier prakaderi a nini. In order for this TRRC to work, um, Gambians must be less hostile, mild with their language, you know. So because you can see because of their attitude towards these perpetrators, most of them are unwilling to come out again. They don't want to come out. They rather stay or run away or even come in front of the TRRC and start lying. Because they know that saying the truth is nothing but um, discrimination to them later. And involving their family members is not also right. They should let them out of it and know that um, just because one man has done this doesn't mean that the whole family must be condemned. People were hearing rumors of the atrocities, the human rights violations that have been going on in this country. I can call it rumors, but there were no evidences, no witnesses to testify. With the TRRC process, we are seeing witnesses, we are seeing perpetrators coming out to the open to tell Gambians what have they, they, they have done. And without this process, it was going to be under the carpet. And uh, the other aspect of the reconciliation, it is done for people to know what has happened. It is done for people to realize that they have been offended so that victims we are Gambians. We are very, very, Gambians are forgiving people. Let's embrace the TRRC process to unfold so that at least we have the never again slogan realized in this country. This new government has inherited a security you know, posture that it cannot sustain. To move on, we need to reform the security sector. The EU or DCAF or the uh, African Union or ECOWAS will only play a part so long to accompany us not to a level where they have to go home. So we are left on our own. And we don't want in a security posture that is not sustainable by our, uh, our local budget. So therefore, it is a need that needs to be addressed. And, and in addressing it, you know, some people have to go. There's no shine away from that. There's no name calling like resizing or right sizing. Oh, no, no, no. No, we need to reform. And if that means you know, bringing numbers down to a sustainable level, that's what we should do. The security sector needs to be downsized. I mean, we don't need all those security officers there. At the end of the day, it's just increasing the national budget, which is of no use. The, the national budget is not reflecting on the realities of the ground. You go to the hospitals, there are no drugs. You, 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 you go to the educational sector, you know, students are there struggling. You know, they're not able to go to the universities. You go to our various workplaces, you realize that no sector in this country is working effectively. So it's a waste of time, it's a waste of resources, and I believe that those individuals can be trained on something important rather than in the security sector. Security sector reform should not only focus on the, the state structures 
um, but it also needs to involve that element of human security. But specifically with regards to state security institutions, I would like to see a very uh, sizable security institution which corresponds with our realities. There have, there have been all this um, counter-narrative as to why there have been a, a, a bloated um, size in the security service. But basically, if you look at it, um, it has to do with issues around employment. And um, in the past, uh, especially in the late 2000s, we saw the increase. That also suggests that we saw an increased number of young people that are graduating without jobs. So the security institutions were ways to absorb these people um, into the system. So the macroeconomic environment must be, must be also be part of the security sector reform because without it, um, generally we push people into the system, you're reforming an institution, but you're creating more job, more problem for, for this limited security service to, to deal with um, people that are inside. So therefore, um, the macroeconomic environment also needs to, needs to change um, and, and that will help address these issues. We are working closely with our partners, I mean, to make sure that we satisfy the desires of the Gambian people. At the end of the day, they are the authorities and then we also are taught by security sector reform that civilian authority should control the armed forces and the security sector in general. The people have to understand that we are here to serve them and to serve them they have to help us help them. So they have to be law abiding. A citizen city that is not law abiding is, a, is, a, is, a, is of higher risk to SSR. And, 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 and a civil society that is not only critical to the process but also constructively critical to the process. You do not want to hold uh, every act of the police as police brutality. You weigh the circumstances and give them the merits they deserve. So we need support from the civil society organizations to go out there and educate the people how to be more law-abiding and how to support the security services in delivering security to them. The Gambian people uh, should also understand that we are not their enemies. Yes, during the past 22 years, some members of the Gambia Armed Forces were used to perpetrate heinous crimes that we all condemn. We all know that it is against the rule of law, it is immoral, it is unethical. But that is just 1% or even less than 1% of the population of the, the members of the Gambia Armed Forces. We are part of the society. And even after we complete our, uh, uh, our services uh, with the military, we'll have to go back to civilian life. Any good military officer is subject to civil authority. Any military officer that wants to remove that civilian oversight, that civil authority, it's not a good officer. It's important to emphasize again that uh, security sector reform is a process and uh, not an event. And therefore, it's slow, but eventually we are all hoping that uh, by the time this process is completed in the Gambia, we are going to be very proud of having a security sector that is professional, that respects human rights, rule of law, and democracy. Security sector that is uh, uh, fit for purpose and uh, that is purely at the service of its people. We want peace. Oh,